Every 23 years, for 23 days, it gets to eat. It has it easy. Every two years, we have to see a movie about it. <laughs> Jeepers Creepers 2 stars a creature that looks like Freddy Krueger with bat wings. There's something going on out here, and I don't like it. What scares you more is that the movie will never end. Well, yeah, I get to give it thumbs down. I kind of like the creeper, but yeah, as you mentioned, you know, they say every 23 years yeah. it gets to eat. Mm -hmm. No, well, who decides that it gets to eat? There, like, and how do they know that? There must be a commissioner of yeah. creepers who says, okay, every 23 years you get to eat. Every 23rd spring. What's been doing up there? For 23 days. I had a dream. He was trying to warn all of us. It gets to eat. It isn't dead. It looks dead to me. Jeepers Creepers 2. Now, what about those guys who look up <laughs> through the hole in the top of the bus to see if yeah, still That's out always there. a good idea, too. If a lot of your friends are being picked off, put your head through the <laughs> hole so that your head can go off as well. <laughs> So what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Jeff Man 316 Pop Culture Reporter Channel. I'm your host, as always, Jeff Man 316. And tonight, we'll put the banner up there. We're watching Jeff Man 316 Live. Let's talk movies, Jeepers Creepers 2. The chat and watch along. So like, comment, subscribe, share during this whole thing or afterwards. Definitely hit the like button on your way in the door. If you want to support, there's the ways below. I know we got our couple of main days already here. Rachel's already here. Hope you're well, my friend. I'm doing okay. I'll tell you a little bit more about. I got a, my arms a little injured, but I'm doing all right. Hello, Rick. Good man. Hope you're well. Yeah, you too, Doug. Appreciate you stopping by so quick. I was trying it out. I did a couple setting adjustments, but it didn't help. And on YouTube, I can still see that thumbs up that I put. But look what it does when I go to StreamYard. It just says thumbs up. I thought that was weird. And then anybody who had normally join me on Facebook for some reason. Now certain channels are not able to stream directly to Facebook unless you go through some process, which obviously I haven't done yet. So we're watching Jeepers Creepers 2, like I said in the uh, in the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and read you the synopsis of this, and I'll read the uh, secondary one and not the main one. The main one's a little short. He says, uh, I hope you're doing well, Doug. Um, Stranded on a lonely road. A school bus full of high school basketball players, their coaches, and cheerleaders must defend themselves from the creeper, a flesh-eating ancient beast that resurfaces on the earth every 23 years to feed. Meanwhile, a farmer and his son set out on a personal mission to hunt down the creeper. Collecting Javi's maximum, yo, what's going on? I believe the movie for the movies at the center will be the back to black because it's just two hours and two hours to so I'm guessing this is in your mic is echoing, really? I don't know what the hell's that. Is echoing, really? I don't know what the hell's that. Give me a second. Is echoing? Let's try this. Give me a second. Let's try this. Try that. Try that. Is that better? Try that. I wonder what it's picking up. Is that better? I wonder what it's picking up. Is that better? 
Echo, echo. Let me know what that sounds like. Might have been because I had my phone on. Let me put my earbuds in. Yeah, but I couldn't hear my phone. It was weird. Because I had a headphone plugged in. I think it was because I had the headphones turned up. Because I had a headphone. I now my damn... I, I, my, now my damn um, earbuds aren't connecting. Give me one second. There you go. That should solve it. Let me know how it sounds now. <clears throat> I plugged my microphone in a different USB port and there was an automatic option that said echo cancellation and it was and I don't know the irony of that is it looks like it caused echo that was weird and then it got worse when I tried to fix it with my phone but either way all right so this is Jeepers Creepers 2 we're going to watch it on Tubi if anybody wants to watch it or anything else you can but we'll end up having commercials so we may end up not being synced up. I know it was funny because last time we, when we watched it, Doug was seemed to be off on his commercial breaks. I thought that everybody on Tubi would have been on the same commercial breaks if you start them at the same time. But I just want to let you guys know, typically when I start the movies on Tubi, um, I've already watched the beginning part where it goes through the commercials. So maybe, uh, I don't know, Doug, do you normally skip, like have it playing and then the commercials would have been skipped? Uh, how does yours, uh, I got to get my Roku app going. How does that usually work on yours? Or do you start it right when I say go? So you've already started it through the commercials? Okay, let me double check and make sure my... Airbud earbuds are going to work here. So what's going on? I hope everybody's doing okay. Who else is in the house other than Doug and Rick? It says we got seven people watching. So and I know collecting and hobbies maximum is here. Doug, Rick, that means there's four other people. Anybody want to chime in and let us know who's here? I have it paused right when it's the beginning. Okay, that's cool. Does anybody else want to chime in before we get started? Uh, let me do the uh, cast list real quick. You get uh, Jonathan Breck returns as a creeper. So he's in this one and he's in the next one. He's not in the fourth one. They replace him and he's terrible, the person they pick. Ray Wise plays the uh, farmer in this that his son gets taken. I love Ray Wise. He was in Twin Peaks. Um, he was the one that played Laura Palmer's father. Um Nikki Acox, I think, is the main uh, blonde in this. I don't remember seeing her in much after that. And there's a bunch of uh, teenagers that I don't remember seeing in anything else after this. So if you, you guys remember any of these people from other movies, this is rated R. It is an hour and 44 minutes without commercials. And once again, it's written and directed by Victor Salva. And we're not going to talk. Um, yeah, it's got a brief flashback. So let's say it's got a minor, minor cameo. From Justin Long, which I think they would have done themselves a ser better service if they had had him in more uh, scenes. Um, as far as maybe you could have had him, if you're going to have him as a ghost or whatever you want to call that, wanting her as a premonition, you could have done that two or three times maybe. But all right, so I've got mine ready too, so let's get into it. So here's the countdown five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. I forgot about that. I've got a, um, here I'll show you. I bought this thing last week. It's the thing, it rotates. I was going to like start recording some unboxings and use it. The Roku device powers the fucking thing. Like when I start up the Roku device, it starts this thing up and I have to turn it off. That's weird. 
Watch. This is a Roku. It starts and stops it. That's weird. Never had anything like that happen. You went back to watch your intro. Nice job. Brad, they actually had a um a Siskel not Ebert. Um what's the other guy's name? Roper. They actually did a um a review of Jeepers Creepers too. And it was pretty minor and both of them gave it thumbs down. Now I can't get this fucking thing to stop. Hey, will you do me a favor? We got uh, technical difficulties all the way around. See if a little remote fell off right here. Yeah, that's it. Redonkulous. Yeah, if they if I can find a review for like from Cisco and Ebert, I always try to um, edit something in there. This movie, I know a lot of people. Um, don't like it obviously as but as good as the fir as much as the first one but I actually kind of like both of them almost the same. Um I don't like some of the shenanigans with the kids on the bus but I love the the aspect of the farmer here. And this whole scene at the beginning setting it up with him as a scarecrow is pretty cool because obviously you know they did something similar to that when he was outside the cat lady's house. Yeah, it looks a little bit like Cujo. I think they got it because it's like outside in the, um, I'm assuming, yeah, it's in the fall. So it's got warm colors like to say, you know, just to let you know how hot it is outside. I like it too. Ebert hates horror. Well, he's, uh, you know, he, he gave the original Halloween movie a thumbs up. So... There are some horror movies he likes, but it's it's few and far between. I'd say mainstream horror, yeah, he hated most of it. I was surprised, I think, when I did that intro for, um, what was it, Devil's Rejects? I think they like Devil's Rejects. Is that considered horror? Is that not, I guess the first one, House of Thousand Corpses, is horror. The second one's probably more action. I don't know. It's weird. That's a weird movie series. Those three movies are so different from each other. Um, called his brother a butt sniff. So who owns any of you guys own these Jeepers Creepers movies? I think I got them right here. Give me a second. I'll get them. We'll talk about them a little bit. So the dog obviously is sensing something's going on. Speaking of Cujo, you do on from Screen Factory. Yeah, those are our good releases. I like the, uh, the you know, a lot of times I didn't like the new com newly commissioned artwork on some of the Screen Factory discs, but I really like the ones for Jeep Creepers. I use them in my little opening uh, thumbnail. Here you got the Creeper. He's eyeballing it. The kid is. Wonder what parts he's taken from the kid, but yeah, that was the the first one. I really like that artwork. They had quite a few uh, special features on here. It's got it's two discs. There's the commentary, a new audio commentary with Victor Salva, Justin Long, Gina Phillips. I've watched, listened to part of that. I remember liking it. I need to go back and listen to that again. Uh, here's the one for this one. I like that artwork. He can taste your fear. What did the first one say? What's eating you? You used to own the first three. What'd you do with them? Here he comes. Run, Forrest, run. He 
Ooh, I made that one a little stiff. I like how you can see his shadow flying over the corn. There you go. This uh this this is a two disc set. I need to go back and watch some of the special features on this. <clears throat> it's got new interviews with Victor Salva, director of photography. Interview with Ray Wise. Was I was looking to see if there's any oh yeah, it's got deleted scenes. I don't remember the deleted scenes. I remember the alternate opening and ending sequences on this one. But I don't remember what deleted scenes it had on there. <coughs> I wonder what parts he's taking from Billy. If, if he can fly, why would he be running with him in the corn? You got the first three on DVD. I think I have the poster somewhere. Yeah, I really like the original poster artwork of the first one with that eyeball looking through the the sewn skin. I like it better, that better than this. I'd like to have that poster. So maybe the creeper was weak. Did he take something from him and that's why he was able to fly? I don't know why. I just didn't understand that part. Like why in the fuck he was running through the corn. If he could just pick him up and fly. So I broke into my storage and took most of my DVDs a long time ago. Well, that sucks. But you can't remember if you got them. Okay, well, obviously, I don't know if the other ones are on Tubi, but I don't I don't want to watch the other, the other ones unless we're going to make fun of it, if this is on here. So Jeepers Creepers 3, the theatrical edition. Did they release anything but the theatrical edition? Would anybody want to see anything? Other than the theatrical edition, two more of this movie would be like garbage. There's an interview with the creeper, and then it says Spanish subtitles. The Sp when does Spanish subtitles become a special feature? Third isn't bad. Well, it isn't good. The some of the CGI is wonky, and uh, I remember going to the theater to see it at that Fathom event, and being extremely disappointed when I got out. Because I was expecting more. I had that third one in a, in a little case. I remember um, I, when I got my Blu-ray burner, somebody didn't want to buy that and asked me to um, rip it for them. Should I be? I should be talking about that, should I? Third time's the charm. No, it's not. And then, obviously, Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Sadly enough, I own two copies of that because I, I thought that cover artwork was hot garbage. Evil's Back for More. I bought the uh, the steel book because I thought, even though the movie is hot garbage, the steel book looked good. My friend wanted a fourth one, and I told her it probably won't happen. There's already a fourth one. What are you talking about? You talking about a fourth one with th this creeper? You got a fourth one with the other creep with the other version of the creeper. Reborn, stay far away. Unless you're gonna buy that steel book. You know, I'm starting to hold on a second. I'm starting to get steelbook burnout, man. I don't know that I need every movie released in a steelbook unless they're going to have better cover artwork. And quit double dipping and putting shit that's already on on Blu-ray or uh, 4K on, in steelbooks later. Like a sequel to the third one? Yeah, well, I don't know if you're ever going to get that. Because Victor Salva, they didn't want him involved. So he basically, I don't know if you call it, I don't know if he sold the rights. But he basically backed out and they wanted to reboot it to get him out of the mix. I give him credit, man. He, the first two. Look at that damn thing. I got that replica, that throwing star made out of bone, whatever you want to call it. I've got that. Um, it was in one of those horror boxes. I got a replica of that damn thing. It's cool.
How come he didn't cut his finger on it? What the hell, man? Is this shit made out of, like, uh, antimanium or whatever you want to call that shit? What is that stuff Wolverine's bones are made out of? Uh, the the one thing they did the move the fourth one was bad enough as it was, they should have at least had the um, the the same creeper because that makeup design and the guy that played the creeper was hot garbage. Fright crate, yeah, I think I remember. Um, I didn't buy it originally, and somebody on a Facebook group or somewhere had like the whole crate that they bought and that was the main thing in it and I, I bought it i think i know where mine's at i think it's in a little display i got with some some other horror stuff so they're hearing on the radio about the happenings from the first movie about them finding that church basement whatever you want to call it Some of the bodies had false teeth made out of woods. Out of wood. That was like George Washington times. They hadn't found any one complete body, so that confirms he takes the parts. But that, you know, up on the... Okay, well, that kind of goes against the theory I said in the last one we watched it, that... The creeper only seemed to smell out and pull, get parts from males throughout the series. Well, they said that they didn't find any bodies that were intact, that they were all missing parts. Well, you know you saw that boy and girl holding hands each other up on the, the tapestry of bodies, whatever they called it. So, did he take a body part from her? I wonder when he, had, wonder when he took it. I thought the person was unique, but don't care for the other ones, really. Someone gave me... The three pack for free. I like the uh, concept of somebody hunting him um, in this one. Like I said, if it was mostly that, I think it would have probably been better. Did the director make the third one? I think he did. Let's see. Yep, written and directed by Victor Salva. I think trying to be cutesy and making it a sequel to the first one and happening before this one did them no favors. Like, they didn't need to be all cute about it. You could have just had a third one. Plus, ending the movie with the idea that, um, what was her name? Derry's sister? Brain fart. I should remember that. What's Gina Phillips' name? I can't even damn remember. What year did the first one come out? Now I gotta know. I don't remember. Trish. Shit. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Having her at the end is Trish and acting like she's getting ready to come out and hunt him before he goes back into hiding, that would have been an awesome fourth movie. Why in the hell they didn't make that? Did anybody that watches now or later, did you go see the Re Jeepers Creepers Reborn in theaters? I think it was one of those Fathom events. I didn't see it. Immediately when I heard somebody talk about how bad it was, I was like, no, nah, I'm not wasting money on that. All right, I've actually got an ad getting ready to start. In five seconds. How many ads I got? I got two. Hey, Doug, did I beat you to the ads? Do you actually have any ads this time? Doug, are you going to get the um, departed steel book or are you just going to get the one with the slip? 
Never seen it, but is Jeepers Creepers Reborn really that bad? Say it ain't so. Yes, it is really that bad. Three quarters of the movie is green screen. Even at the beginning when there's we're in the car talking. They can't even do that out, you know, in a real car. The, and then everything about the movie. I don't know. They they, they don't they kind of change the the backstory of the creeper a little bit or as far as what he's doing and it, it does the most of the movie he's not hunting people out in the wild he's hunting people in a house it's just a weird concept and the the creeper looks so bad the makeup i would you, you after watching it you wish that they had uh done like jaws and not shown him until the end Well, they well they could I'm sure they could have used his characters. They bought the rights to the movie, the Jeepers Creepers name and the creeper and the look is similar of the creeper. The concept's great, but the execution isn't great. I always thought of them as PG thirteen yuppie teenager movies. If there were some hot girls doing more hot stuff in between, well, I maybe agree with this one. I really liked the first one. It was dark. It's, it had a non-Hollywood ending with the way they, um, uh, you know, with the bad guy kind of winning. Departed is uh, that Martin Scorsese film that's got DiCaprio and um, Jack Nicholson in it. It's really good. Comes out this week in 4K. I thought you'd probably get it. An undercover cop and a mole in the police attempt to identify each other while infiltrating an Irish gang in South Boston. It's got uh, Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Wahlberg, Jack Nicholson, Martin Sheen. It's good. It's like a step down from, you know, it's nowhere near as good as Goodfellas or any of that thing like that. But um, it's good. But I, th I didn't think the artwork on the... Uh, Steelbook was that bad. Was that good? I I think I might just get the slipcover. I've only seen it once, and I liked it. But I mean, I, it's not one I'm gonna run out and try to find. That sounds so bad. Well, I can't believe they treat all these different franchises like straight trash. Never stops. Well, I think if Victor Salva hadn't been such a sex perv. And, and and basically accused of, you know, diddling with them, the, those kids. They would have, um, the, the concept, he could have written a better fourth movie than that. Yeah, I mean, that's what everybody says. Like, why do you need the, the, the boys standing out there taking a piss with each other, laying around on the top of the bus with no shirts on? Uh, a lot of people said Victor Salva wrote that in the script so he could sit, have be around all those young boys. I like your name, by the way, Fruit of the Tomb. That's kind of cool. I appreciate you supporting me. Um... Yeah, get your ass back on the bus. What, what group of high school boys would be laying out in the sun on top of a bus? You think it's mechanically possible for him to take that post hole digger and, and turn it and build this like harpoon launcher out of it? But were they, oops, but were they actually under 18? Um, the kids that he got accused of doing that stuff with were. I like a more classical Friday 13 type formula, but uniqueness is always good if executed well. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's probably why the first one was, was you know, so popular. This one, the reason this one's a little more tolerable is because it does continue directly into the story net. But if it, it needed to have 
some closure on the dairy character. Just showing him in that like premonition scene or whatever wasn't enough. So he's making the harpoon the thing out of that knife or what is he doing? No, there's that. He does use that later, I think. Like, all these movies need, like, daggers and shit. Like, the evil dead and all those to kill people. To kill the creature. Hey, Doug. Did you see Immaculate? Did you say... Did you see, say you went to see Immaculate? I don't think you ever told me whether it was any good or not. Because I saw it. Let's just say I didn't see it at the theater. It might be on demand by now. I'm not sure. Well, they would be if they continued the story of Trish. Like they were, like I said, that they teased at the end of the third one. Because she was getting ready to go. She knew that every 23 years, which it would have been 23 years, that they were, um, since the, the last movie, that they would have been able to, uh, had her be the one that was hunting the creeper. And that would have been awesome. You saw Immaculate forgot what it was about. About that nun who got pregnant, like had the Immaculate Conception, was pregnant, even though she didn't have sex. What did you think of it? Hell, here comes the part with dairy in it. I also think, kind of like go to what Collecting and Hobbies Maximum said, this blonde chicken is pretty hot. Maybe they should have done something with her instead of him always worried about showing boys with their shirts off. There he is. Wonder how much they paid him. Like for 10 seconds worth of camera time. There he is again. I haven't seen First Omen yet. Why they got to show his belly button tattoo? We know who that is. So that pretty much proves the boy did die because there's his spirit. Like they got their soul has unfinished business on earth. Here he comes. I like this part here. That's cool. The design of the creeper is so much better in this than the, that the reborn. So she sees who throws the the dagger. I thought that immaculate was kind of boring in some sections and they would just randomly after it got going throw some stuff out there like a couple things you know to keep you interested but it was like overall pretty much a boring story and i in the ending i guess they just tried to throw tack on a tack on a shock ending to make it better I read how the movie was supposed to end and it would have been the movie would have, would have been so boring and and probably not even watchable with the ending they were talking about making. So you like that better? I'll watch First Omen then when whenever I can see it.
right when Bizarro shows up, Doug makes this comment. I was hoping to see Sidney Sweeney nude in that, but oh, a. And she, hello, everybody. What's up, Bizarro? Yeah, I think she's a little too uh, new and turning into kind of like a a new final girl type. I don't think you're going to see her do anything like that for a while. It's like Samara Weaving. Everybody thought she was going to be the next great final girl. And then what the fuck has she done in the last like two, two or three years? So I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't come back and she'll be in probably nude in some movie to get to spark the interest in her again. I don't remember what blew the tire this time. What was it? Oh, another one of those? Oh, it's Derry's belly button skin. That's why they had to remind us of that. I forgot about that. So he uses people's skin to make weapons and shit. I'm excited to see Abigail Tuesday and she was nude in, in anyone. I don't know what that is. But you, anyone but you. Did I see that? I don't remember. I don't know if she's been nude, but I, I don't think she's that good of an actress. She's okay. She's just the next great blonde, young female in a bunch of horror movies. I like Samara Weaving a lot better. Where's she at? I didn't see that either. So now I got two movies that Doug's recommended. Are both of those on Amazon? Can I watch both of those on Prime? I'll look it up. You're not going to, Doug, you're not going to see, um, what's the movies about the Sasquatches? Is that out yet? You going to go see that? Did you spell voyeurs right? Maybe I'll just look up uh, Sydney Sweeney. Oh, I did see anyone but you. Shit, I forgot that was her in that. Damn. I don't know why I didn't know that she was in there. I haven't seen The Voyeurs. What is that? A young couple find themselves between becoming interested in the sex life of their neighbors across the street, which starts as an innocent curiosity turns into an unhealthy obsession after they discover that one neighbor is cheating. Temptation and desire causes their lives to become tangled together. Ooh. You barely remember the French films, but I think I was hoping for a more direct sequel from the first one, like the characters going back for revenge on the Creeper. But who would have been left other than Gina, and she didn't want to do it? Gina Phillips playing Trish. There would have been nobody left. Well, Jeepers Creepers 3 is a direct sequel to the first one. Set 23 years later. What's up, Arturo? Appreciate you coming by. Was a uh, he's talking about uh, Sydney Sweeney? You know, I forgot that that was her, and um, I owned that movie and watched it. 
anyone but you is kind of it was decent but i didn't remember that that was even her shit I might have to go back and watch it again. Yeah, the voyeurs I've never seen with her in it. Is the voyeurs any good other than that? Am I going to be sitting there the whole time bored just waiting for her to be nude? This is when the, like, assuming that's the coach, he's pulling him up. Ow. You haven't seen it? What did you do? You just Googling up nude? Who, what movie she's nude in? You do you, you must have a Dr. Skin, I mean, Muster Skin account, right? Now I got to Google it. Doug's making me Google it. Seems a little dark, but... But we'll see. Maybe I'll give, tell you whether I give it a thumbs up or not. Is that available? On, can you buy that or is that Amazon Prime exclusive? I don't know. I don't need. I don't like that dude that's in there with her. I'll check it out later. So the coach there is now dead. That dude's got some blood all over his face. Scotty doesn't know. You might know what that's from. I was listening to that song yesterday. Scotty doesn't know. Oh, her. I saw her on some HBO show with that chick from Spider-Man movie. She's pretty, especially on the red carpet. Yeah, I was telling her I saw that movie Immaculate. I mean, it was okay, but I was it was it was some boring parts in the damn thing. So I was like, they just mixed in some shock moments to make it tolerable. She's a good actress, but I like uh, Samara Weaving better. No, I just know her. She just knows his research. Also, that Sunset Success Watch is only available to Wednesday and not playing 12-something. I'll wait for streaming. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't pay money to see that damn thing anyway, but I heard it was funny and that a lot of people were walking out because of the, there's some um, gratuitous... Sasquatch sex and shit in there. And I don't think there's any true dialogue. It's just them grunting for like fucking two hours. I've got commercials again. What comes out this week on uh, physical media? Is anybody buying anything? What did I think of that new guy? The Bloodline new guy? Tomatonga? Haku-san? I think the Usos are really nice. Take on... Um, Rick says hi. Um, I knew he was probably coming in because they've been talking about it for a while behind the scenes. He was in the Bullet Club over in New Japan. So back when they signed a bunch of people, re-signed Finn, AJ came back. Um, whoever else was over there and there. And then Cody, when he made his, um, in one of his promos, he did like a Bullet Club symbol from over there. I knew that they, he was probably not going to be too long coming, so I was just wondering when. They also signed Jacob Fatu as the rumor, and he's going to come in as the next Bloodline member. So to me, you're going to probably end up getting Solo Bloodline eventually versus Roman's Bloodline, which will be he'll reunite the Usos when he comes back. 
that's the way I see it going. Could have a um, a bloodline like war games match maybe. She said, hey, Rick, same to you, buddy. So, you got Ray Wise sitting on the farm hearing the chatter over the CB. Or police band. I guess she's listening to the police band. You guys ever listen to that? I, I used to have one of those apps on my iPad, and I would listen to a bunch of those uh, police bands from around here. I heard it's very human and it's 90 minutes. It has a lot of fluids. Piss showing shit close up. Buttholes. Puke. Sasquatch sex. It's like fake nature doc documentary. They said it's shot beautifully. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack right there. The parts I don't like are fluid piss. Shit close up. Buttholes. Puke. I might could stand some Sasquatch sex, but none of that other stuff. Rain's bloodline or solo bloodline, but who will Haman be? What side will he be on? I'm thinking Roman. He looks a little shocked, and it's almost like Solo is forcing him to be there. Haman is such a good actor. Wrestling-wise, you know what I'm saying? One of the problems this movie has, Jeepers Creepers 2, is there's no dominant main character of the kids on the bus. You got Scotty, who's basically a racist, homophobe, who uh, kind of is the dominant guy. To me, the girl who had the premonition, she should have been the main character in this movie, and they should have done more with her. This dude's the ultimate homophobe. So the creeper should like bite his dick off and eat it. Scotty doesn't know. Did anybody nobody answer my question? There's a song in a movie that they sing called Scotty Doesn't Know. Does anybody know what movie that's from? <clears throat> He's a homophobe said cock of the walk. Uh oh. That girl, the blonde right there, they should have done more with her. She's one, pretty much one of the better actresses in this movie. Hey, Bizarro, how's your schooling go? How's uh, school going? They also said it's sad because, like, they're calling for others and no answer, and it goes through four seasons. I'm wondering if they will die at sunset. Do I think Tiffany Stratton will go to Raw in the draft and Lynch to SmackDown and L.A. Knight possibly to Raw? And I think they will separate that Judgment Day group, possibly... Um, I'm a little torn with that. I think at Backlash, you're going to get Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. I don't think it's time for Tiffany to win the belt yet. I see Tiffany, Tiffany or Chelsea Green winning Money in the Bank. Um, the Battle Royal is going to be who, uh, is is a toss-up. You don't know whether there's going to be Raw or SmackDown people in there. So Tiffany could end up being in that. It's a battle royal. I wouldn't be surprised if Liv Morgan didn't win it. My schedule changed again. I'm going to school completely different days now. So I do all my homework Friday since I don't work as much. So I got Sunday free now except for when I have finals later. Well, that's kind of cool. Hopefully you'll come by and see us um, silly men talking bullshitting about movies more often 
you class up the joint, as they say. I like this part here when he's sniffing and he's basically going to tell him to like start moving. And he's like, you looking at me? Look, he's like. Hey, I'll show you something. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in here. I'll show you something. I hurt my arm today. Oh, yesterday. You want to see it? Watch this. Look at that. That's like the deepest, biggest bruise I've ever had, man. It feels like my damn arm's broken. Did you think I was going to hulk up for you? So, yeah, like I said, he's telling the movie, he's getting the found to the final, that lone black guy in the back. He's the one he wants. His eyes look uh, brand new. I guess he's still got Derry's eyes. wonder what part he needs from him. Yeah, I wish. I don't have that big a muscle. I got a damn heart muscle. That was from a uh, the recoil of a shotgun. This is when he's shaking the bus. I like when he rips the hole in the top and pulls the guy through there. Andrade would be a better fit for... Who's it? Oh, and for you with Escobar? Um, I don't know. The problem you got is any they're probably not going to pull the belt off Cody anytime soon. So anybody that's got a chance at the raw belt that they want, they might as well keep some people over there. Because Andrade, I could see eventually him fighting for the raw title. Yeah, I understood what you meant uh, after I read it. Um, I don't know. That draft is going to be very interesting because, you know, now that Cody is on SmackDown... They're going to need some uh, opponents for the Raw more than just, uh, what do you call it, Drew McIntyre and uh, CM Punk. Yeah, I can't wait to see who's crowned the champion. I got a feeling that it's going to be Nia Jax, but I was hoping for Liv myself. I don't know much about any Amy Winehouse, so it'll be nice to know more. Yeah. You have to let me know whether it's any good. I don't know that I'd want to see that even for five bucks, though. Oh, I'll tell you what I did while we got a little lull in this movie. So, um, we did a team activity with some of the guys at work, and we did, um, they called it clay pigeons. I've heard people call it skeet shooting, and I did that, and I'd never done it before. And uh, we had a double barrel shotgun that we were using. And um, on one of them, we got to the end and they were doing multiple of the clay pigeons at once. And I got a little over anxious. And I, when I jerked the gun around to get it on the second one, it went in, instead of being on the crook of my shoulder, it went into my muscle of my arm when the recoil did that. That's kind of cool. At least Justin Long got paid um, for speaking. Beating you, eating you. Nah, I'm probably not going to go see Abigail. I'm probably going to wait and just watch it home. The next movie I'm going to go see at the theater is probably um, The Fall Guy. I think it comes out in two weeks. She all passes out when she has her premonitions. Like I said, they should have done more with her. 
The only way I you was talking about the the draft. The only way I see Becky going to SmackDown is if Seth goes to SmackDown. I don't know if either one of them are even going to be in the draft because as of right now, they're both taking time off and they both could be out for several months. So they might just draft them to Raw to keep them on there. Yeah, Liv Morgan. Her um. I don't know what they're going to do with her. Her problem is she is the fans kind of booed her a little bit because they like Rhea Ripley so much and because she hurt her. But people forget that in real life, Rhea Ripley hurt Liv Morgan and, and put her out for nine months. So ironically enough, in real life, Liv was the one that hurt Rhea. So they've got a built-in story there. They should do something with it. But I think... If Liv wins, the fans might boo her, man, because she might have to turn heel. So nobody knew what I was talking about that movie when I said uh, it's a song and it called Scotty Doesn't Know. I've asked like twice. Nobody knows what that is. You got five ads. Doug, you know what movie's got Scotty Doesn't Know in it? A song that they sing in it. It reminded me when this guy's named Scotty. Scotty in this movie doesn't know that he's a racist and a homophobe. Got this app that makes everybody into comic book characters. I think I might try it. I had one of those one time and then I and then it worked and I can't and then I got rid of it when I got my new phone and I can't remember the app. Well no, it was on my iPad and it had a different account, so I couldn't look up the history of my downloads. What app is it? Tell me the name of the app you're using. She's not a believable heel, at least for me. She doesn't sell the bag barrel image like Shayna Baszler. Well, I don't think she's um I don't think she is wants to be a heel. She wanted to be a face. But because she hurt Rhea and Rhea's so popular, everybody's treating her like a heel. So I hope they don't turn her heel because of that. Um, but I think they need to come out of the blue and have somebody else win the belt, somebody you're not expecting, so that then in a month or two they can just drop it. Euro trip. Yeah, you got it. Quit looking shit up, man. That's not fair. Now I've got ads coming up. Euro trip is funny. Is that movie on Tubi? We need to watch that. And Doug will like it because it's got titties in it. Is your trip on here? No. Life's not fair. <laughs> Jay Cargo and Raw would be good, but they know they're gonna she's gonna team up with uh Bianca. She's still green. She needs Bianca to somebody like her to help her. So they're gonna end up teaming and winning the tag titles. So, I'm, I'm fine with that to get Jade, like, uh, some more experience. Yep, that's what I just said. Wouldn't be surprised if it was early as Backlash. But it'll be good, though, like I said, because Bianca working with Jade, I think that's exactly what they need. Right now, Jade is all style and no substance. Whose car was that? I don't remember. Damage control will be broken up and then Kari and Dakota will go to Raw. I don't know. I mean, Asuka and Kairi Sane can't speak good English, so they kind of need a mouthpiece. If Liz, Liv turns here, that's fine. Most of the smaller girls are more believable as champion. 
if they do underhanded tactics like Zelina, Sasha, and Alexa. See, if they had already debuted or what they're going to do with this um, Uncle Howdy group, if they had already decided what they were going to do with that shit, I would think Alexa Bliss might come back. But I think she's going to be in that group. That crispy cuppy roni pizza isn't good. Plus, has like no sauce. What's crispy cuppy roni pizza? The fuck is that? I don't think Braun Breaker will go to Raw because they just spent all that time and energy saying he was a free agent and signing him to SmackDown. If it was real life, he would have a contract and he wouldn't be able to be eligible for the draft. So I think Braun Breaker stays on SmackDown. It's like the Chacaroni pizza now. Yeah, I remember eating that and that was good. Raw needs a powerhouse. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Lashley was back on there. I mean, now that um, they beat the was it the Last Testament? What the fuck is their name? And they're basically on NXT. Raw's gonna be weak for a while if they don't do something with the draft because. Um, I don't see the bloodline going to Raw, and that means I also don't see Kevin Owens since he's got a little bit of a feud going, obviously, with them after what they did to him. Um, it's going to be weird. Uh, the good thing about it is they'll, they'll make it to where the the pay-per-view has to happen first, and then the people will go establish on their, their brand. So, you know, anything can happen to the pay-per-view as far as switching champions. Did I watch the QR code thing from SmackDown? Yeah, I did. Plus, I watched uh, somebody's video breaking all that shit down. Here's the part I like where he's pulling his fucking head up through the hole in the bus. That's pretty cool. Oh! He's like, fuck you, bitch. Kevin Owens was really looked like he was busted open, but they didn't show how he got hurt. When that car wreck, didn't you see the cars? Where like Solo or Tommy Tonga run his car and the Owens' car in the back. And the old Pierce drug, not Pierce, um, with SmackDown General Manager. Uh, drug Heyman out there and basically ask him but he better not know what happened. I like that part there where he put that thing through his head. That's pretty fucking epic right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cool effect him moving it back and forth in that head. That is cool. I like that. I see your comment. Do you ever go from 316 to 420? No, not very rarely do I ever do that. I was talk, tell, talking to somebody last night, and I was telling them I ate some gummies, man, and I didn't know how much they were going to affect me, so I, I should have done uh, another one of those on 420 to see if it... If it didn't affect me as much the second time. Oh yeah, you forgot. Uh, what did the QR that the which one? The one from two weeks ago or the one from last night? The one from two weeks ago was uh, a video clip. I forget what it said, but it was like Plato, uh, Plu, uh, something about Pluto, and then Plato, and then it was like somebody watching a a video of a crow, and they're using this crow as the symbol for something in that group. It's weird. You can look it up. I mean, it, it hasn't come out and pointed anything specifically to Uncle Howdy or any character, and you know, any specific character yet. 
I like the concept of the creeper being around since the beginning of time, but I like to see him being created. Yeah, that would have been cool. There was a lot of flashback shit in the third one. So it would have been cool if they like actually showed him how he when he got started, how he got created. Remember, because they said that one of the bodies that was in that church well, had wooden teeth. It's either going to be Reigns or versus Rock, or it's going to be Rock versus Cody. Rock's not coming back for SummerSlam, I don't think so. I wouldn't be surprised if you got Reigns versus Solo at SummerSlam. Because Heyman keeps saying that, that what Solo's doing is not authorized by Roman. But Roman basically anointed Solo as the tribal chief when he wasn't there. You remember that? Acknowledge me! I'll be very interested to see Roman come back to see what his character is going to be. I think he might be a tweener, like an Austin type. Like he's going to be the face, but he's still going to have heel tendencies. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if L.A. Knight got moved to Raw. Ain't no fucking way I'd be sticking my head up through that hole. He's laying up there injured. Ian disappeared after his question. The question is, which one of you guys enjoyed yesterday's 420 the most? Them just randomly taking turns, like knocking each other over, that's really going to get the door open. L.A. Knight versus that tattoo guy who I don't find interesting. Priest would be a nice feud. Yeah, I think Priest's title reign is going to be short-lived. He'll defend it at Backlash and win. What's the next pay-per-view after Backlash? Whenever that clash at the castle is, I think Drew McIntyre should win the belt there. They ain't got something they can bust the window out with. Go out the emergency back door. That's what I mean, the front door. That, do that door, that little hinge door in the front of a bus isn't that strong. Four twenty is Hitler's birthday. Do we really need to know that? I guess that's pretty significant. So you come on here and you um you learn a lot. 420 was Hitler's birthday. Don't say you didn't learn anything from watching my streams. I think Good Gunther should be getting his title shots. He would represent the brand and the goddamn. Oh, I agree with that. But I don't know if they're going to hold him off to to uh, SummerSlam. Can you imagine a Drew versus uh, Gunther, or uh, maybe they'll hold him off to um, uh, winning the belt at WrestleMania? Yeah, F Hitler. Bad news for Europe. Got this big ass wing.
Has that blonde been in anything else other than this? Maybe she redeemed her poor character arc. We need to figure out what we're going to watch next week. We need three... We need three um, choices that we can put on a poll. Have we watched Terrifier 2 yet? That's a little long, though. That's like two hours and 18 minutes. I don't know about that one. We got Joyride. We haven't watched John Carpenter's The Thing yet. Got that. Yeah, I know. I bought that Gardens of the Galaxy one, but it's a nice steel book, though. Croc, Poltergeist 3, or Hell House LLC? Croc. Um, Poltergeist 3. Oh, God. Where did those come from? Is your asshole hurting from where you pulled them out of your ass? Is Croc... A, you talking about Croc? C-R-O-C-K exclamation point? That's that uh, shitty... Crocodile movie I got in a five dollar bin at Walmart. Why would you pick Poltergeist three? This motherfucker ripping his own head off. I love this part. Dude. She'd have shit stains in her underwear to next Tuesday. Are you going to do the Scream series? I don't know. I mean, we could, but I don't think any of them are on a streaming service. We'd have to all... I like all... I like the main... I like it. It's not bad. I, I mean, I agree. It's, it's pretty... Most people hate it. I, don't, I like it. Um, that's the one with Tom Scared in it, right? Nancy Allen? I hated that uh, remake of it, though. Good, got my man's head growing out of his body. That's cool. I like that right there. We could do the Scream series. Is any of them? We'd have to watch our own copies. I'm sure everybody's got Scream, right? Yeah, it was. It was, was pretty strange. To me, one of the saddest ones was when they were filming the talk about that cursed film series on Shutter, the the one about Twilight Zone, the movie where that helicopter crash decapitated that Victor Vic Morrow and those two child actors. Let me look up a couple movies here real quick. I've always tried One second. I've always tried to respect people because if anybody new comes on board to watch it with us. I don't want to have to. We'd have to pick one. That's a freely available to stream. Is the way I always did it. I know. 
I don't mind uh, not it not being on free streaming when it's a really popular series because almost everybody owns a copy. We finished Friday the 13th, right? I don't think we've watched but like one or two of the Chex Chainsaw Massacres. Well, how I mean, how, you say it was no accident. I mean, he's not like he did it himself. But I see what you're saying. He was, he was on set, and he was the one responsible for it. So yeah. It didn't even occur to me that yesterday I got eight movies for four twenty. It had Tenacious D, House Party, Harold Kumar, Go to White Castle, Friday, Project X, Where the Millers, Due Date, Inherent Vice. Yeah, all those movies that you named are about pot. Yep, that was about, that was about pot. There's some movie apps on Google that have thousand movies free. That's how I watch almost everything. We could definitely do the uh, screen movies if you want. But it was a couple we mentioned here late. I, I, I'll put up a um. Just to prove whether people care whether they own it or not, we could put. I could do a poll, pool, a poll, and we could put um, a couple of movies with the first screen being one of them. Like John Carpenter's The Thing is on here. Isn't there an Evil Bong series that has like ten movies? Yes, it is. If you watch um. Go look at the video that I did where I I bought stuff during that uh, full moon half price sale. Let me see. Jeff Man 316. Full moon. I think that's where you can look it up. Yeah, go look. This is the thumbnail. Look up Jeff Man 316 full moon. I did a mega haul. Look at that box set of those Evil Bong movies that I bought on Blu-ray. It's in there. How about Strangers and Stranger 2 Pray at Night? That'd be cool. Actually, you know, when I went to the theater to see um, Strangers 2, I liked the original Strangers better. The more that I've watched them over the years, I flip-flop. I like the Strangers 2 Pray at Night better now. Yeah, he's like, why are we splitting up? That's classic movie uh, shenanigans there. What about Waiters? You mean Waiting with Ryan Reynolds? That's funny. I love that movie. That movie's awesome. I can't wait for Deadpool 3, man. I was kind of looking at some of the, when I click on Tubi, like what they list as some of the popular movies. Two thousands horror includes Jeepers Creepers and Jeepers. Yeah, I'll put that on there. We can do. Uh, I'll do a poll and I'll put waiting on there. Justin Long is in that. Have you guys seen High Tension? That horror movie, High Tension. That's on there. We watched Midnight Meat Train. And we've already watched the original Tex Chainsaw Massacre on a live stream before. That scene with the chick pulling her pews was so funny in that movie Waiting. Yeah. <laughs> There's an awesome movie, like an uh, indie film called a uh, splinter have you guys ever seen that where this alien goo lands and it basically looks like gets inside of stuff and splinters it out and if it gets on you it basically starts taking over your body joy rides on tubi yeah i love joy ride that was one of the ones we talked about watching 
So we literally watched the the they're running their ass off across this field now. We watched the Hatchet series. We watched the Friday the Thirteenth series. Oh, he's throwing one of those bone damn shit. One of those bone throwing stars. Yeah, we'd have to. We could make our way through the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. I don't think any of that's streaming. You'd have to watch. You'd have to own that shit for sure. Oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is on Tubi. They've got the Clown Chainsaw Massacre on there. The Spanish Chainsaw Massacre. Creep Show 2 is excellent. Have we watched Creep Show? You know, I'm one of the um it's not on there, but Creep Show Three is. I'll just go ahead and tell you, I watched Creep Show so much when I was young. Um, I actually like Creep Show Two more, or Texas Chainsaw Two Thousand Three Remake. <clears throat> the only Texas Chainsaws on. Tubi are the original two. Did we watch the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre? We watched uh, the Netflix one. I don't know that we watched it. I haven't seen Creepshow two in a long time. I like Creepshow two, man. That's the one of the the uh, the um is it called the raft or whatever the one that's on the water. It's got the Indian uh, wooden Indian guy that comes to life, and then it's got that guy that gets the the hitchhiker gets run over at the end. It keeps coming back. I remember who's in Joyride, but don't remember the plot really. The uh, Paul Walker was going to go across country, uh, got him a cheap car, was going to go pick a girl up. Then his uh, he ends up having to bail his brother out of jail, and the two of them end up picking her up. And then they they do a prank on that guy in that truck, that um, 18-wheeler, and then he comes after him. Just the Netflix one. Yeah, one of the I think the first one is where the Indian the 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 store Indian the wooden one comes to life that and then it's got that guy with the long hair that ends up scalping. Thanks for the ride, lady. Yep, thanks for the ride. Appreciate you coming by, Jeff Walters. To hit a thumb a thumbs up on the video, please. Um, I'd watch the original. You talking about Creep Show? I like both of them, but for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's because the second one was kind of a staple on HBO back in the day when I was younger. Um, or Cinemax, one or the other. I used to watch it all the time. I like it. Got some, uh, Doug, I like it. It's got some pretty good nudity on the one about the raft. And I like that last uh, segment about the thanks for the ride, lady. That's pretty cool. It's got a cartoon wraparound. Instead of a live action one that I kind of like as well. Doesn't the original creep show, the wraparound story, have Tom Atkins in it as the dad who that boy ends up um, buying a voodoo doll? Bush on creep show too. No, I don't think it's Bush, but it's a nice pair if you get my catch my drift. The boy ends up, uh, the girl ends up uh, on the out there in the middle of the lake. With I think he t she takes her top off, or it's open, and he takes it off. You like Creep Show better too? That's cool. I thought that that's kind of a hot take because I know a Creep Show is so um. Ow, my arm. Ugh. 
creep show is so uh you know iconic original chainsaw we can watch texas chainsaw massacre if you want then we could watch the second one dog will hunt dog will hunt let me make sure that it's not ending we'll look once this is over kind of short it's hour and 23 minutes then we could talk more afterwards but yeah Maybe that's what we we'll do. Does anybody, everybody want to watch Texas Chainsaw, the original one, next week? I think the original is operated. You mean overrated? I do, too. Um, it's still good. But um, I actually, another hot take, over time, uh, there's been some of the remakes that I've almost started watching more and like more than the originals. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of them same thing with the evil dead um i like the evil dead the original one but it's kind of hokey and cheesy and i love the remake of the evil dead you don't what yeah hills have eyes that first one the original is kind of cheesy man but it does have d wallace in it that's a plus I think she I used to think she was hot back then. Johnny boy. I'll put a poll up there and we'll see. I was I, we might um I wanted to watch Joy Ride. He might can we watch Joy Ride first? Is that still on there? Is that one word or two? Yes, yeah, still on there. There's like uh, three Joyride movies. There's a movie called Stripper Party on here. Doug, have you watched that? What's that about, Joy Ryan? I'll read. I'll read you the. Uh, I just described it a minute ago, but I'll read you the official. It's Joy Space Ride, two thousand and one, starring Paul Walker, Steve Zahn, Lily Zobisky. Three young people on a road trip from Colorado to New Jersey talk to a trucker on their CB then must escape when he turns out to be a psychopathic killer. There are a little bit more details. Is College student Lewis decides to drive across the country to see Venna, a friend who doesn't know that Lewis is interested in her romantically. Unfortunately for his plans, Lewis gets saddled with his raucous-spirited older brother Fuller, whose on-the-road pranks get the brothers and Venna sucked into a nightmare when a psychopathic truck driver takes offense and so the drug truck driver comes after him it was joyride waiting and there was one more i believe you said something about scream how long is joyride do 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 hour and 37 minutes double feature man i gotta work next day well actually i don't it's my wedding anniversary next monday so i don't think i'll be staying on here that long we'll do that one day during the summer when i take a day off We'll do two. We'll do Texas Chainsaw and then another movie because Texas Chainsaw is only an hour and twenty some minutes. But yeah, I don't remember what it was. We were talking about watching Waiting with Ryan Reynolds was one of them, and then you got the Creeper took a lot of uh, damage in this movie. Anaconda. Have you seen that ja the trailer for that Japanese remake of that? Wait a minute. Oh, I, yeah, it's a uh, Anaconda. Kind of... 
we can watch Monster Python. How about Jurassic Shark? Sort of like that Russell Crowe movie where he's road raged and follows a woman and his son. Yeah, well, it's not road rage. They um, they pretend like they're gonna meet that there's they one of them pretends like they're a woman, and they want to meet this guy. They love his voice, you know, is what they're telling him on the CB, and they want to meet him. And so they set up a rendezvous at this hotel. And when they and they and then when they get there, they give them the wrong room number, and there's that actual guy in there where the truck driver actually kills the guy, and then they they uh, get upset because they were involved in it, and then the guy comes after them. Her son, I meant. Yeah, I know what you meant. Um, that movie's pretty good. I like that. It's not a. It's kind of an old concept, but Russell Crowe um, made it better because he's he was really uh, he was really over the top in that one. He looked like somebody that had fucking road rage, didn't he? You ever see that movie with Russell Crowe? Um, is it the the new guys with Ryan Gosling? Um, I wouldn't say it, it was decent. It's worth watching, but, uh, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. I like Kurt Russell's son. He's like the main guy in that. Yeah, Joyride is good. I like Paul Walker. Here he comes. He's flying back. They're doing an old harpoon trick here. He should be like Jaws. Smile, you son of a bitch. Pew. Here he comes. That was totally stupid. I know he had to do it, but to, to shoot through the bus like that? And if you watch Joyride, the 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 sequels, if you watch any of those, they're made for home video. I think the second one was kind of tolerable, but the third one was total trash. What made, uh, to me, the movie, part of it was the guy doing the voice of, uh, what was his name? I can't think of the guy's name, the CB handle he used. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. I was going to watch it this weekend, and then I had to go on a partial business trip for two, uh, Friday and Saturday, so I haven't watched it. It's on Shudder, and I'm going to watch it this week, so once I watch it, I'll let you know what I thought of it. The Jeepers Creepers monster was reborn by that old guy that kept him on his property, if I remember. I haven't seen it in a while. Well, at the end of this one is when he gets onto that on his property, but I don't think that's how he got started. Yeah, that was totally stupid. Him cut shooting through the windows. Shit's just sawing right through that damn top of that bus. I was disappointed with it, not my cup of tea. What day does it come to Shutter? It's already on Shutter, from what I understand, because a bunch of people tell me they watched it last night. You know, there's the in the, one of the Facebook groups I am Killer Flicks. There, it's overwhelmingly positive that everybody said it was good, but I did see a couple people that I usually agree with saying that it was very overrated and that it it was uh like I said before about that other movie it was a lot of style and very little substance he said it was awesome so 
I'll probably li- end up liking it. I, you know, I love most of those Shutter original movies. Uh, a lot of them are way better than the, you know, the. Uh, you would think because of the low budget, they'd have like very low production value. But a lot of them are actually pretty good. I usually I used to buy all those at the Dollar Tree, and I've bought some of the Shutter movies after watching them on Shutter to own them on physical media. You got three commercials. I don't have any commercials yet. It's kind of cool that Shutter's done that though. They've like backed movies or made them, produced them, and then they uh, put a they they've put a couple of them in theaters, and then after a month or so, then they put them on their streaming service. To me, I ended up getting Shutter. I can't or like at a promo price through. I think it was through Prime. Amazon had it cheap, and I signed up for it. Um, and so was it only like five, six bucks a month? Uh, yeah. Also that, and I think we Xfinity now has uh, Shutter through there as well. But um, it is well worth it to me, just if nothing else, for the Joe Bob uh, content. Just don't expect it to be Exorcist Believer. Well, like my review of Exorcist Believer, if they had not called it Exorcist Believer and just called it a straight up possession uh, horror movie, it would have got way better um, reviews because people wouldn't have went into it with the expectation of it being a Exorcist movie. Shutter makes better than Netflix. I don't really bother with Netflix. I'll get yeah. That's pretty much what I say. <coughs> Sorry. Piece of popcorn went. Um, I hate when I, you eat popcorn and then later you end up getting one of those little shells still in your teeth. Um, but yeah, I agree with that. Netflix maybe like will be good, maybe one out of ten movies. <laughs> Most of the Shutter ones at least have some type of production value. If you guys see that movie on, um, what's the one that they're getting ready to remake? Um, Speak No Evil. Did you guys see the original Speak No Evil about that Danish family? Hooks up with another couple and they spend a weekend with them at their house. They're remaking it with James McAvoy in it. You've been hearing Netflix did a cartoon of Good Times, old comedy show, and some folks are offended. I don't know about Offended, but I watched the first episode, and it was garbage. I haven't watched much past the first episode. I didn't see anything offensive, but it was not good at all. You know, I haven't had kettle corn popcorn in so long. I don't remember if I like it or not. I think I did. Witch in the Window was awesome, too. I don't think I've seen that. You got to be, that guy's shitting in his pants. He's in the back of a truck and the, and the creeper is um basically flying behind him. You know, the CGI isn't the best in this. But it, this right here, that's pretty good. It's way better than the third and the fourth one, man. Stay down. You're flipping a vehicle over. Did he if did he know it was gonna flip over? Because if that's the case, there's no way that they that he should even think that that guy survived. And I think isn't that guy just laying out in the field somewhere? Oops. You wonder if Paramount will release the new Beavis and Butthead cartoons on DVD or Blu-ray, but I seriously doubt it. Probably not. Any news on Peacock Jason series? I haven't heard anything new. I mean, other than basically everything is up for grabs as far as anything they want to talk about or show in it. Um, But I haven't heard anything about it as far as anything, no news. Kind of worries me. You think something would leak out about it. We haven't had, what, it's been since 2019? 
since we had anything new Friday the 13th related. That's pretty damn pathetic. You got those two old farts that own the rights to the different, like one to Friday the 13th and one to Jason. They ought to realize that basically for 10 years, they're not making hardly any money off of anything. It, any, it could be so much more significant. And they're sitting there just basically holding a grudge against each other. We need a, after that abysmal last uh, attempt at a reboot, we need another Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And um, Nightmare on Elm Street was never my biggest, uh, I guess, franchise as far as the ones I like. I always liked Halloween um, as far as the first four movies. I it's I've always been a toss-up of, which is better, the first four Halloween movies or the first four Friday the 13th movies? Because obviously the first Halloween is way better than the first Friday the 13th. But the second Friday the 13th is pretty damn good. So it's almost like that's a tie. And Friday the 13th Part 3, most people consider it better than Halloween 3 since Michael Myers isn't in Halloween 3. But, but Friday the 13th 4 is the quintessential horror movie, man, a slasher movie, basically got everything in it you want to perfection. So that's hard to grade that. Did you hear that Chucky episodes will no longer appear the day after it airs on Sci-Fi? It will now be a week after. No, but I DVR the episodes anyway. So, Oh, God, my arm hurts. <clears throat> I didn't even watch most of season two with Chucky. I waited until they came out on Blu-ray and watched it then after I bought it. Last I heard, the Friday 13th stuff is supposed to start shooting sometime between April and June this year. Yep, I heard it was sometime th this year. I didn't know. I don't haven't heard an update of whether that's tr really the case. You wish Sean and Victor would just sell Jason and the Friday 13th. I know, or either just go, let's split all the shit 50-50. Um... They're not fifty percent of money is better than fifty percent, fifty percent or zero percent, however you want to look at it, of nothing, which is what they're getting now. Nothing, as far as anything new. You don't have sci-fi or Peacock, so it might wait till it comes out on Blu-ray. I've only watched like the first episode, maybe second episode of the, of the new season. I've got them DVR'd. I just wasn't impressed. Like when I first when I watched it, I wasn't like, "Oh God, I've got to, I got to keep watching this." Sorry. I like his part coming up right here. Sure, they made shitloads of green when Shout Factory, Screen Factory got the right so that. Yeah, I'm surprised they were able to get all those movies in that set with the the as many companies that were involved and as many um, as much as they were going back and forth still in court before that. There you go. In the face. I don't think I got that bumper. I made one of in the face. I don't have it. Bummer. Speaking of Friday 13th, I got this one. Your tits are stupendous.
Nope, I don't have that one on here. Oh, well. We'll get over it. Looks like he flipped them off. <laughs> the special features two discs on that set were awesome, the Friday 13 said. Yeah, it sure was. What was the big uh, book they did that they made in the documentary series? It was like so many hours. That 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 was an excellent documentary series. This guy's going berserk with the spear here. Game over, man. Game over. I guess he, because he thought he heard him. It looks like he's dying. He thought he won. Look at that. I always like that. It kind of reminds me of the Predator. I know. I said Predator and it reminded me. Anybody excited to see that new Aliens Romulus? Is that the name of it? Movie? That's coming out? It looks pretty good. I like the trailer. Going back to the roots, as they say. He cocooned up. That's weird looking. Um, one of them owns the right. I think Sean Cunningham owns the right to the Friday the 13th name and concept. Because uh, Victor Miller wrote the screenplay and created the Jason character and everything and his look and the description of him or whatever, he actually owns the right to Jason. So that's why when, um, I think that's the way it is, or is it the other way around? One or the other. Um, that's why they tried to get rid of the Friday the 13th name when it went to New Line. And the only thing you they referenced was Jason. They didn't call it Friday the 13th because they didn't want to have to pay for those. Never seen the Alien films. What? The new Aliens would be awesome indeed. Yeah, I think. Yeah, look, what? What? I don't have a what. I don't think I got Stone Cold saying what. I got him saying... Um, This is a uh, the reaction to Doug saying he's never seen the Aliens movies. A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit? Well, you got to get on the fucking ball, man. You got a lot of movies to watch. The Friday movie script was supposed to be completed this month. Now checking about the TV show. <laughs> um, I'm always torn because if I want a horror movie, I usually like the original Aliens more. It's more like a haunted house atmosphere. Like, you know, you, you're stuck inside that alien spaceship, can't get out. The second one feels more like a sci-fi movie to me. It's not as horror. Um, so I'm hoping it gets back to the horror roots. With that new one. I never ending amount of movies I still got to watch. I know, but you need to watch at least the first two Aliens, man. Alien and Aliens. Didn't you buy Aliens? You got the 4K of that. You need to watch both of those. The first two. The other ones I like, but you could skip. 
Alien Three and Alien Four, and you, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, hurt, uh, hurt you. You got five commercials. I don't have any five commercials yet. I got the kids showing up at the farm twenty three years later because the son is now an older man, and the body is uh, hanging up in the barn. In due time. Well, the new one is coming out. Is it? It's this year, right? Is it July? You got to watch them before that. I think it happens. You need to watch the first two. The new Alien movie, I think, takes place between Alien and Aliens. To be fair, and haven't seen the Alien 3 one. Alien Covenant was okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the first two were kind of hard to to beat man they're so good but i think the new one takes place between the first two so you need to watch first two doug is an old soul but he's still younger i think he's in how old would you say you are doug you're in your 30s 30 he's gonna be 30 there's a movie coming out in 2024 called a violent nature which green rant says is the closest thing we've seen yeah i've seen the trailer it looks fucking epic man it reminds me of like friday the 13th um, meets like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. As far as it looks kind of gritty, the the trailer I saw was shot full frame, like old VHS style too. I like this. He's like, you waiting for something? Give or take a day or two. I like the ending of this, but like you said, why didn't they like do something in the third one to continue this, or the fourth one anyway? I was looking to see that the girl, the blonde that was in this, if she did anything any good after this, and it doesn't look like it. But I do remember, um, now that I said that, she's in Joyride too. I like what they did with the new Predator. I hope they continue this idea. Yeah, I, I like what they've done with that too. I've never really seen Friday the Thirteenth either. I've seen Friday. I mean Friday, not Friday Thirteenth. I've not. I've seen Friday after next, or is it next? It's Friday. It's Friday, next Friday, and Friday after next. Child's Play is what's going to play on mine after this. Um, well, neither of the sequels can touch the original Friday. The original Friday is way better than both of those. Did you go see the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2, Doug? The Christmas one. Isn't that the third one? Friday after next? I think so. The uh, the guy that played the father on there has passed away now, so it would be hard for them to do an, another one because he's such an important part. Friday after next is not good or two either. Well, they're tolerable, but it's it misses something not having Chris Tucker in it. Uh, Mike Epps is is like is not that funny. I don't know that I like much of the stuff he's in. He's pretty much a poor man's Chris Tucker, but then Chris Tucker stopped acting and doing all that vulgar stuff there for a while. Did you guys hear that Brad Dorff, you know the voice of Chucky, said he's basically retired from acting, but he'll still do the voice work of Chucky if they need him. Should I put the poll up for next week or should we just go with Joyride? Yeah, I remember watching this. Chris Sarandon is good in this. I remember liking him in um, Fright Night. Horror Inc. filed a cease and desist copyright claim against a fan made 
video game called the Friday the 13th Resurrected. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. What did I ask again? I don't remember. Oh, about the poll. Should I do a poll and put Joyride waiting and something else on it? Or should we go ahead and just watch Joyride next week? Let's watch Joyride. I haven't watched that in a while. It's good. It's my channel, damn it. I think that's what we do. We can do the poll for the week after that for something else. And then we need to eventually watch. Or do we want to watch Texas Chainsaw? I think I want to watch Joyride. I've got that on Blu-ray. I can't remember. Did I buy any of the other ones? I don't remember. Oh, I did ask, did you, uh, did you, you did get aliens in your Disney order, right? All I've seen about the Friday 13th TV, TV series is in currently in production. They were okay. Chris Tucker should have done Friday too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I did that. I've already ordered that. It's about to take us forever. About as long as it took my box of birth to get here. I'll get it like a month after release. That shit got to get on a boat and come from Australia. I think Cody uh, went to see it. We'll watch Joyride and then I'll put a poll up for the week after that. We'll put some choices on there. So we're watching Joyride next week. It's a good movie. Bizarro says thank you. All right, I'm not sitting here watching Child's Play, man. If I was going to watch something, it wouldn't be that again. I just hadn't been that long ago to watch Child's Play. What do you guys think of the Child's Play um, the reboot? We need to watch, uh, before the third one comes out in theaters, we need to watch Terrifier 2. I don't know, man. That movie's like, dark and grainy in there. I don't know whether that would even look good in 4K. Some of those old catalog titles, man, I'm just telling you. I haven't been uber impressed with some of the catalog titles 4Ks lately. Unless it's a big blockbuster like The Departed I heard looked good. Have you seen the shitty uh post artwork for Jaws 3 and Jaws Revenge coming on 4K um, as far as overseas they haven't shown the one uh, any US release or announced it but uh, it looked like hot garbage why can't they use the post artwork anymore was there that's I would Google says there was a new episode of Family Guy tonight. Does anybody watch still watch Family Guy? What um did you say waiting? Oh shit. Yeah, we need to watch Terrifier too. Waiting Ryan Reynolds 4K. If it is, it didn't pop up immediately. Family Guy still on? Yep, it sure is. My headphones disconnected. Yeah, they got Terrifier 2 on here. I can't get my headphones to connect. How many Joyride related movies are there? I'm pretty sure there are three.
Oops, is a Twister remake happening? Uh, I heard it wasn't, it might not be a remake, that it might actually be an indirect sequel, like in the same universe, but might not have any crossover characters, but it's not an actual remake. There we go. Yeah, from what I understand, there's three Joyride movies. Like I said, to me, part of the 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 reason they're good is the guy doing the voice of um, the guy on the sea beans. I can't think of his name. What's his name? Shit. Rusty Nail. Is it Rusty Nail? Thanks for the info. Yeah, it's called Twisters. Yeah, I saw the poster artwork for it. Is the guy's name on the CV Rusty Nail? I think he is. And I forget what he, he's looking for as far as the girl's name. Um, Candy Cane. That's it. R Rusty Nail was on there, the bad guys. He's always looking for her called Candy Cane. You're going to watch Night Swim before I go to bed. It's not bad. I mean, you might like it. It's just not as good as I was hoping it would be. I'm looking forward to Terrifier 3, though, in theaters. That's going to be good. So, um, before that comes out in theaters, we'll watch the second one. Yeah, Rusty Nails his name. I like him when he's on it. He's like, Candy Cane. Has anybody seen Candy Cane? For anyone but you? Okay. I don't know. Would you classify that as a slasher? Not really. I got uh, Terrifier 2 playing in my ear. I think I'll watch the new Ghostbusters tomorrow on my lunch break. Well, I did my review of it. It wasn't terrible. I gave it a soft thumbs up. It wasn't what I was expecting. And I think I got... The way I worded it was, I think I got, uh, you know, real nostalgic for Ghostbusters and liked it a lot more when I saw it. But then after thinking about it afterwards, I started nitpicking at it and realized that it's just it's just a Disney version of Ghostbusters. You can hear what? I love... Uh, all Hallows Eve, Terrifier, and Terrifier 2. You should better hear Terrifier 2 now because I got my earbud out. Yeah, it's playing in the background. It's uh, they've already had the opening scene where he killed the the dude in the uh, morgue. Oh yeah, there's the art right there. I got a little. Oh fuck! Is anybody left in here? Saw my arm. Look, look at this bruise. Look at this fucking bruise right there. That's why I can't lift my arm up. Um, I got a little clown horn right there. Damn. Ugh. Pick his nose. 
I can't lift my arm up that high, man. It hurts. Where's the nose at? Pick his nose. You're funny. That little girl creeps me out in this movie. I don't need to see art sitting around. Yeah, I was telling the guys earlier, I was, um, I did a team act building activity with some guy, the men at some men at work. And we did, um, skeet shooting. And when it got to the end, you had to do, it went from just one at a time. And they did like two different ones. And then, went, and then you did three rounds of that. And then they went to two at a time. And uh, there was like a delay between them. And then at the end, on the last one, they literally would do two. And then within a second the set the set of the first one launching, the second one would. And I was following along with the, with the clay pigeon thing. And I got the first one. And then when I went to... I did it too quick to get to the second one. And the gun moved off my shoulder into my arm. And I pulled the trigger. And that was from the recoil of that shotgun into the muscle of my arm. I'll let you know what the rib mystery movie is and how Abigail is. How did that happen to your arm? So did you just hear what I said? Did you understand what I did? So we were skeet shooting, basically. I'd never done that before, and I'm, I'll brag and tell you that I'd never... I've fired a gun before. I've owned a shotgun, but... Um, I had never done any type of... Uh, skeet shooting or whatever you want to call it. And uh, they get you did twenty five different ones, and uh, I hit eighteen out of twenty five. I've never done it before in my life and hit eighteen out of twenty five. So the guy asked me how in the hell did I get learn how to shoot and aim that well? I told him it must have been from all those years I played uh, Call of Duty with my son. Oh, my God. Unless it brings back the original guy's voice. To me, it was, it was kind of a ruined concept after that. I can't believe they're making another one. Why would they do that? The other three, the second and third one didn't make any money. Think I've seen all three already? Skeet, as in S-K-E-E-T. I think that's how you how you say it. <clears throat> yeah you ever seen them like they're launching those clay pigeons so you're standing like in a little um, booth and the guy over next to you is hitting the button and launching them and it's, it's, to, it's to simulate um, birds flying in front of you and so it's kind of like the video game duck hunting used to be. So then you're sitting there with a real gun, though, with two live shells in it. And then you're, uh, you tell him to pull, and then he shoots one. And then after you fire the first one, then he shoots another one. Until you get to the end, and he doesn't tell you which one he's going to do. And he fires one and waits a second and fires the other one. And that was the one that with a gun, when I went jerked around too fast, it went pulled. You're supposed to put it in the, like right where your shoulder starts, so it, your shoulder gets the impact of it. And I actually did it and went into my, my, my meat of my muscle there. This is how you, I looked it up. This is how you spell it. That's how you spell it. If you want to look at Google it and look, watch somebody do it. It's, uh, if nothing else, it's like a cool adrenaline rush. You're actually firing live ammunition and trying to shoot something. But it was cool. All right, boys and girls, I think I'm going to drop off here. I appreciate you coming by and watching Jeepers Creepers. We actually watched, um, yeah, I, ice helps, but I put some on there earlier, but it's just, just such a deep fucking bruise, man. And it's so big. 
The guy who played Jason and Freddy vs. Jason played Rusty Nail in Joyride 3. Yeah, I think he did. But the cool thing about it is, um, if you look up, the guy who did the voice in the first one was the best voice. I don't think he's credited. And it's the guy from, um, hold on a second, I'll tell you. A monk. It's a guy who plays Monk's boss. The uh, actor is named Ted Levine. He's the one that played in Silence of the Lambs. Uh, you know, the one that tucked himself in when she was coming after him. But uh, he did the voice of Rusty Nail in the first one, and there's no replicating that, man. He did he did a great job. Good night. Yeah, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Everybody have a nice night. So, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching Jeepers Creepers 2. It was cool. We watched a majority of it this week, actually, or talked about a lot of it. So we're going to go ahead, since we've been talking about it, we'll watch Joyride, and then next week we'll pick three movies we'll put in a poll for the week after that. So, like I said, I really appreciate you coming by. And watching it, I got a um a really cool, uh, I found a really unique Walmart $5 bin um, at the end of last week that was really, I think it was a week ago, that was really well organized and I found a bunch of cool stuff in it. I'm going to do a video, a standalone video of that. So watch out for that. Um, I got the new horror pack in the mail, so I'm going to be unboxing that. I got a couple other videos posted. I'm, I did a Goodwill trip. So watch any of those videos, please, anybody that supports me, and give me a thumbs up on this live stream and those. I really do appreciate you guys uh, supporting me. So I'm going to go ahead and close off of here. And so good night to everybody that showed up. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, boys and girls, this has been Jeff Man 316 As always, I'm your pop culture reporter, and I'm signing out saying you guys be safe out there. Mr. Mayor, Chief. Ladies and gentlemen.